we're going to unbox and assemble an extra large rat herd chicken feeder. Now these things are also made to use as dog feeders. Styrofoam. I'm going to set this on the floor to get it out of the box. Get your inner packing out. Save all the inner packing in case you need to reship it. Do not ship it without the inner packing in place. That protects the feeder from getting cut. You'll, you'll always have an occasional bend in the feeder. Or, it's just part of it. It's a big box, it's heavy, and it's handled by humans. So, if you get a little dent, you can bend it out by hand. You just walk it with a hammer. If it's too bad, we'll send you a replacement part. What we don't do is we don't ship things back. We have a little bit of We do a really good job of this. So much for the counterweight. Better if you don't do it upside down. You have a treadle. Doesn't matter which way the treadle goes, it'll work either way. We had a couple of concrete counterweights taped up in a cradle. Like the cradle got, got bent. Let's turn this bad boy over. See, there's one right there. There's a little bend in it. Lock it with a hammer, and you can bend that right back out. They're too expensive to ship back for a minor shipping damage like that. We would have to double the price of our feeders to avoid that, either in a more expensive box or package of hardware inside. Okay. Now, you got a package of hardware, I'm going to use one that I've already opened, and in it, you have a couple of uh, bolts and a couple of fender washers, poke one through the side, and put a washer on it, you'll find a couple of plain nuts that do not have the plastic uh, liner that makes them um, lock nuts. You want a 7 16th of an inch on the inside, and you want a 10 millimeter on that little nut. Tighten it up good. I'm going to do this other side real quick. Nut and bolt, washer and bolt, another washer, nut on top of that. All this hardware can be found in a local hardware store if you happen to lose one of them, break one of them. concrete weights that we already have out over here and you basically stick one through the hole there's a little pin on top that drops down you take another lock nut the lock nuts will have a white plastic in, the, in one end of them you uh, the plastic goes on top in other words the the bolt should turn by hand for the first quarter inch or so and then it'll the plastic will hit it and what you do you basically deform that plastic to lock that thing down. And you want to snug these up. You don't want to tighten them and break the concrete. The power of a screw thread is enormous. And it can, you can literally break the concrete. Just snug it up good. We're going to do the other one. Put your bolt through the hole. Put your pin on top of it. Put your lock nut on it. That simple. 7 16 inch wrench for the lock nuts, 10 millimeter for the plain nuts. The idea behind the pin is to have a, an assembly that you can't, you can't get it wrong. If you had two bolts, well, they would put the bolts in the wrong place in the concrete or they'd put the holes the wrong distance apart and then you couldn't get them on there. The only thing you got to remember is put, make those pins to the top when you put them on here. 
your treadle over. You might notice there's a little bit of difference in the in the height. Doesn't matter. We're going to put another lock nut on here. Now this time I've got to hold that from the inside to keep it from turning or I'll loosen up my original nut. So I'm going to put a crescent wrench on the inside. The socket would be nicer. Just likely to slip. And I'm going to pull this over here to the end and see if I can if I can make this quick. Save you some time watching this video. We're going to snug this thing up tight and then we're going to back it off. You want it tight so that the, the treadle bar is not flopping around and you want it off just enough for it to move. Now later on we're going to bend these out so they don't catch on the rivet. Now let me attach this other side. Tighten the bolt up, really. Piece. Rather than pull these wires off, I'm going to use a set that I've already had here, and they'll probably be close enough. You got a big hole in front where the wire goes. These were used on an earlier video, so they're a little cantankerous. It doesn't matter which way you poke the wire. On the medium feeder it does, on this feeder it does not. So we'll do it a little easier that way. Right down here and pop it in. Let me turn that around. Just so it looks like the other one. Okay, there we go. Bend the bottom up and get you a wrench and bend the top down. Now you don't want these too tight. You want that wire to be able to flex. If it's too tight, the wire will flex and it'll metal fatigue and the wire will break quickly. You just need to bend over enough that they can't come out. A pair of pliers works better than a crescent wrench, by the way. All right. Now we're going to bend the treadle bar out a little bit so that we're not hanging on a rivet on the side of it. And right now it's fighting the uh, soft clothes. So we're going to put a spring on it, and I have got a spring that has already been adjusted. You just hook the wire over the, uh, the spring over the wire link, and that spring will pull your door closed. Sometimes you have to work it a little bit. Sometimes you have to back off these lock nuts a little bit. Make sure that you're truly free. There we go. You're going to put it outside, take this little lip and bend it in a little bit with your hand. Don't worry about gaps. You're going to find gaps up here, gaps up here. You'll find a gap down here. The rats will not go through them. It's sheet metal. They can't get a hold of it. It's spring loaded so they can't push their way in. Uh, sometimes a feeder will come with two springs, but generally two springs will overwhelm the soft clothes and it'll be much noisier if you try to put two springs on it. Let's see what it does with two springs. Hmm, I got this one here upside down. And if you've got these, if you're, if you've got the extra large feeder, you've got these series of holes drilled in there that you can use to adjust the length of your, there you go. Now, one thing, you want to have this thing 
secured to a wall or a post, and when this trailer comes down, it's got to bottom out on something. And preferably, 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 it will bottom out before it hits. Listen to this noise. That will scare your chicken, so you want this thing to bottom out. Uh, put a patio block down there, a 2 before, uh, whatever you've got to do, a little liquid nail on the 2 before. Uh, you know, anything. Bury a patio block in there and dig the dirt out underneath it, whatever you got to do. If that's nice and solid, the chickens will use the feeder a lot better. Uh, these are replaceable. You can get them on eBay. They're like a buck a piece. We have replacement springs. We have replacement water links in our, kit, our upgrade kit and repair part section of our shopping cart. You can order almost any part on here. Now let's look at some of the finer features of it. You've got a massive axle. The bolt on top is what holds the thing in place, so if you ever want to remove the door to work on it, you pull those bolts off. There's a flat part ground in the top of this to keep the bolt nice and flat. Um, there's your spring, there's your holes to adjust the spring. Um, let's see here. Inside, there is a, it's difficult to see, but there is a lip right down there and there's a single bolt and you can adjust that lip up and down if you want to feed dog food big dog food you can do that there's a better shot of that lip there's a bolt in there believe it or not uh, it's a single bolt so that you don't have trouble adjusting it it might cock one side or the other but it doesn't really matter and uh, if you want to you want to feed uh, you know uh, crumbles you can push it down a bit if you want to feed scratch grains push it down a little bit further pellets you know about midways if you're going to feed dog food bring it way on up the idea is you don't have too much feed building up down here in the bottom but when you've got this thing set for big chickens or dogs it's pretty hard for a rat to push his way in i'm pushing with about probably two pounds of force there and a rat just can't generate that kind of force they only weigh about you know three quarters of a pound themselves um, on the back you've got a you've got a cavity in the back and there's a two before that comes with it. The two before is rough and ugly. It, it's just some scrap pallets that we cut up instead of putting them in the landfill. And you take that two before, you uh, screw it or bolt it to the wall, and then you put your feeder over it and run some screws in from the side. Now these are not holes. That's just part of the assembly process. So just make your own holes for the screws. That feeder holds about 63 pounds of food. Uh, God, uh, I don't know how many... Well, let's see, that would feed, uh, boy, several hundred chickens for a day, you know, or, you know, a, a dozen chickens for two months. But um, they're big. They're, uh, you get shipping damage all the time with them. See the little bin right there? And again, it's just part of it. You cannot, either we spend twice as much money on the boxes, make the boxes bigger, and you pay twice as much money for already expensive freight, or you live with a little bit of damage sometime. Not all get bent up, but some will. Uh, this particular one was probably one that fell off a forklift because it was on top of the stack to use for this very job. So that's probably why it had the big bend in it. But just expect a little dent every once in a while. And uh, we've got repair videos on our website. Um, you can fix just about anything on this thing. We sell the repair parts. And if we don't have it, we'll make it for you. And good luck training your chickens. Just make sure that treadle bottoms out. Make sure it's uh, secured to securely to a post. Make sure they have no other feed and make sure you train them you know, according to the instructions. And if you do that, the chickens will learn quickly. Uh, the, our biggest problem is teaching the humans. It's not teaching the chickens. So thank you for watching. Bye-bye.